space. The final... You know we're not talking about that kind of space, right? Welcome to the Visual Center. I'm Carlos, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you what color space is and what it's for. Color space can be one of the most important parts of color management, and it can help you achieve accurate color, so it's important to understand it. In a previous video, I talked about how the human eye sees color. Now it's estimated that the human eye can see between 2 and 8 million colors, and color scientists have a mathematical equation that maps those colors onto what's called a chromaticity diagram. It looks like this. This shape represents all the colors in the visual spectrum, and from that they can determine the color range, or gamut, of all the other color spaces, like sRGB, Adobe RGB 1998, and ProPhoto RGB. More on those in a bit. This graph uses the LAB model, and it's actually more of a three-dimensional graph. LAB stands for lightness, A channel, and B channel. Lightness is the vertical axis. The A channel is the magenta to green spectrum, and the B channel is the blue to yellow spectrum, and then all the colors are plotted within this space. We'll come back to this 3D graph in a little bit. Now, let's address the question I get asked all the time. Which is the best color space? Which one should I use? The answer to this is a little complicated. Hey, can we take a moment? This mindset is one you actually want to try and avoid. The mindset of the universal fix-all, in art, there is very rarely a situation where you'll have a solution that'll be good to use in every situation. So this idea of which is best is a dangerous idea to play with. Is it best for this project? Maybe. Is it best for the next project? Not necessarily. It's important to avoid the which is best mentality and try to understand the principles behind the solution so you know when would be best to use it and when would be best to use something else. Never stop learning so that you can add more tools to your toolbox and then use the right tool for the right job. Okay, let's get back to color space. There are a lot of different color spaces out there, the three that I mentioned being the most common. But why do we have so many? The majority of the color spaces out there were designed for very specific situations, like printing on a very specific paper on a very specific printer. But let's take a look at the most common ones. sRGB is the smallest one, but is also the most widely used. It's used by apps, web browsers, and a lot of devices that display color. So it's become kind of the standard color space to use. But why would the smallest color space be the standard? That comes from limitations in technology. Smartphones, tablets, monitors, projectors, all have different color gamuts, and some will be able to produce more colors than others. So in order to display accurately across all of them, we use the smaller color gamut so they're all capable of producing the same color. So when you're preparing your image, it's important to keep in mind what you'll be using the file for. For example, if you're preparing it for web use, you'll want to use the sRGB color space. But when you're editing your image, you actually want to start with a larger color space. You see, when you edit your image, every change you make compresses the data just a little bit more. So you want to start with as much data as possible to begin with. This is where Adobe RGB 1998, also referred to as Adobe 98, and ProPhoto RGB come in. Adobe 98 was designed by Adobe to improve upon the sRGB color space, and it can replicate about 50% of the visual spectrum. This makes it a very versatile color space to work with, and it's actually the one I recommend. More on that soon. ProPhoto was designed by Kodak, specifically with photographers in mind, and it can replicate about 90% of the visual spectrum. Now this may sound like this is the one that you want to work with because it's such a large color gamut, but you want to be careful with it. One downside to this color space is that 13% of it consists of color that either can't be seen or doesn't exist at all. Let's take a look at that 3D graph I was talking about to compare them more visually. Here is a 3D model of the sRGB color space. You can see we have the lightness, the red to green spectrum, and the blue to yellow spectrum. Here is Adobe 98, a little bit larger. And here is ProPhoto, much, much larger. Another downside to ProPhoto is related to printing. Most digital printers have a color gamut similar to Adobe 98, which is why I recommend it. 
Let's compare Profoto with Adobe 98. We can actually drop Adobe 98 inside of Profoto. You can see that there are a lot of colors in Profoto that are not in Adobe 98. So if a printer has a similar color gamut to Adobe 98, there are a lot of colors in Profoto that would not be printable. On the same note, we know sRGB is used by the internet. Here you see there are even more colors that could not be reproduced on the web. So it can be a hard color space to work with. Now that you've seen the differences between the most commonly used color spaces, hopefully that'll help you make the right choice for your particular project. In general, you want to start with a larger color space and then convert to a smaller one as needed, like exporting for web or for print. There are a lot of little nitty gritty things that go into preparing a file for print. So if you're looking for a video on that, make sure you subscribe and click the bell for notifications. And look for my next video, where I'll show you how to set color space in Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. If you found this video helpful, give it a like, share it with a friend. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.